Hey everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Timothy. That's right. Timothy's here. <laughs> you, Timothy's you here to talk about <laughs> menstruating with me. Uh, we talk about horror movies oh on this show and this is uh, our horror movie podcast and in this episode we are going to talk about Carrie because it was the winner of this month's Patreon vote. So it's kind of a biggie actually. Carrie's kind of a classic. Yeah. Uh, so kind of a notable notable episode to be doing. And sure. we're going to dive in. We'll start spoiler free. We'll give you a warning before we get into spoilers somewhere in the middle. And that's what we're going to do. So uh, brace yourself for some Carrie. Uh, actually, before we get started though, just a couple of things I want to remind you about. We are going to have a live stream as part of the Octoberthon. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a big live stream um, on the 21st of October at 6 p.m. Pacific, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, and 2 a.m. UK. Uh, we're going to have a live stream, uh, which is something that we're going to do monthly if we hit a Patreon goal, but we're doing a special sort of one-off version right now for October Thon, uh, where me and Tim will be here live, we'll talk to you guys uh, on YouTube on, on that time and place, and we'll do also do a live movie watch together, uh, where we're going to watch a movie that we reviewed a long time ago. A crazy film called Pieces uh, is going to be the film. So you've got about a month or just under a month uh, at the time this goes up to get your own copy of that, assuming it's not on Shudder, which I think it may be actually. I think it's on Shudder, but uh, or uh, Amazon know, Prime or whatever. Yeah, I know it was on Prime for a little while. I don't know if it's still there, but yeah. if um, it's, if, it's pretty easy to find. Yeah, if it's not, you've got a month to track down your copy. But yep. Yeah, so we're going to do a live uh, viewing of, uh, of pieces um, after some, you know, typical hour or two hours of Q&A, whatever it may be. So it'll be a fun night. That's Monday, the 21st of October. Um, so hopefully we'll see you then. Sure, UK fans are <laughs> very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, horror fans are night owls by nature. They should just accept That's it. True. <laughs> just accept it. They'll be there to watch the next day if they want to yeah. watch it back. It's fine. Right. It's fine. <laughs> well, Tim, if you'd offered like a nice afternoon stream, we could have done it. But yeah, we don't want to do that. We want to do that. We want, we want late night. We want to be Halloween yeah. themed. <laughs> right? That's true. Uh, so yeah, we're going to talk about Carrie. And I almost started as I said that because I kind of second guess myself. But yes. <laughs> I thought you were doing a Friday the 13th thing. No, no, no. I'm just, it's a little <laughs> bit sick and my voice, it's a little bit, it's, it's not like super hard to speak, but every so often like the back of my mouth just kind of like makes it difficult to end the word and I'm having to kind of you know what you need to do pause you need and to plug it up <laughs> plug it up you see yeah i think we've got another recording after so i'm gonna get a hot drink for the last recording we've got after this but uh yes. r- right now we're gonna have it carry stephen king book of course which only came out uh two years before this movie uh, mm-hmm. Car- Car- Carrie was only two years old as a, as a book when the movie came out yeah. uh, you got Brian De Palma as the director who this is still relatively early in his career as well and he he made this film and uh, Carrie if you're unfamiliar with the plot it is about a teenage girl who is very sheltered uh, by her overly religious mother and she has telekinetic abilities which comes to a boiling point when her classmates play a practical joke on her at prom and i'll leave it there i feel like it's almost pointless not to spoil this one because everyone knows the end of carrie but i'm going to go through the motions i'm going to just like for the sake of anyone who is avoiding it i'm going to yeah, nice and, it. and it's one of those things where even if you haven't seen it, you've probably seen it like parody in pop yeah. culture like millions of times. Um, yeah, crazy. It's a uh, yeah King's first book, and and it's and it's great. And he almost didn't uh, publish it. It's uh, I've heard the story. Know, he, I've heard the story. Yeah, you he, tell. Yeah. he like th- yeah he uh, you know wrote it and then uh, actually think he he threw it out and his like wife <laughs> like picked it back up and was like, hey no, what are you doing? This is good. You should uh, publish this one. Yeah, uh-huh. I, I think he hadn't finished it. I think she forced him to finish it. No, this is good because it, it felt oh, self conscious. Yeah. He's like, oh, what, what, I'm, you know, I'm like, I don't know what age he was at the time. I'm like a 30 year old guy or whatever. Yeah. Like, what, what am I doing? I don't know anything about, you know, a teenage girl puberty. <laughs> like, I can't yeah. write this book. <laughs> and his wife's like, no, no, it's good. Finish the damn thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so we're going to talk about Carrie. Uh, so, yeah, that's the, that's the premise, I guess. I guess we'll just, I'll just ask the question. Tim, <laughs> uh, do you like Carrie, the, this, in particular, this movie version of Carrie? Yeah, because there, there have been, it's surprising how many like different versions uh, there's been. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I like this a lot. This is a uh, very, very uh, well done <laughs> film. Um, you know, the story in general, I, I think is good. Uh, you know, the book's really good. Um, and it's a, you know, pretty faithful adaptation like um 
I don't think there's really anything necessarily different. Uh, you know, it's just maybe a few stuff that's like left out uh, yeah. more than anything. Isn't the, uh, the, uh, the very final scene new for the movie? Which doesn't, which doesn't uh, change the, the end of the story. It's just a little, little scene at the end, right? Oh, that like a uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That that little like whatever sting, last yeah. sting thing. Yeah, yeah, that's new. It doesn't really change um, anything. It's just you know this little extra yeah. scare moment. Yeah, but uh, no, I, I think it's great. Uh, I, rewatching this, I mean, I think and you know, you know maybe uh you know film buffs might get on me uh for this uh, if, if i have like one tiny complaint i do think it's like a little dated like it, i don't think necessarily makes it bad or that it means it needs to be remade but every now and again there's some stuff that feels like super 70s in it like you know there'll just be like a little like music thing where it's just like and it's like <laughs> you know the, the, this definitely does feel like a little you know bit of the time but it's always you know, time yes I... yeah but it, it, it definitely doesn't necessarily like like make it like bad or whatever and uh uh and you know i think the performances are really great you know like sissy spacex uh you know amazing um you know the person that plays uh you know her mother's great uh, uh paper laurie yeah. who i i was wondering where i knew her face from she's a uh, catherine twin peaks oh oh wow okay Oh, that makes sense yeah uh cool uh yeah no, like I, everyone's really great even like you know john travolta i think does like a you know good job um uh, so yeah. How could you not? For, how could you not mention a Nancy Allen, who is <laughs> is a fantastic actress from the era, um, and also PG Souls, who's in Halloween. Oh yeah, of course. She's, <laughs> yeah, got, she's always great. She's always wearing a hat in this. So that's like her characteristic. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so no, I, I think it's a, it's really good, um, and I like it. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> Are we done? Okay, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time with Screws After Midnight. Um, yes, I like it a lot too. I actually agree there's a lot of, a few dated kind of elements to it, um, but for the most part, it's really solid. And I think, you know, I was enjoying watching it again, but it's the final like 30 minutes when it hits that where it really becomes something special. And I think uh, I was like, oh, yeah, this is why this movie's so good again. Yeah, it's just, I mean, I was enjoying it well enough up until that point, but I, I think. Yeah. Um, what one of the little techniques that I don't like in the movie, and it's something it's not specific to this movie, but it's something that I just don't like that some movies at this time use. I, I know Brian De Palma used it a few times, and I like him as a director a lot in this era. Mm. Uh, you know, his, his stuff at the the you know, in the eighties especially, I really like. But uh, it's this split focus effect where they've got a long yeah. lens and both sides of the screen are in focus, but you can kind of see this line in the middle where the focus, where because you know, the background should be blurry based on like who's in focus in the foreground, but you can see this line where it sort of goes out of focus and into in focus because then the second half of the screen is in focus for the character. In this movie specifically, it's in the, it's in the classroom. You've got um, Tommy at the front and you've got uh, Carrie up at the back and they're both in focus and it's really weird. It's just, it feels so unnatural to me. It's, it's like against the rules of cameras <laughs> that it feels... And obviously there's a technique to do it. That's why it's happening. But it just it feels, I don't know, like unnatural to me in a way that I don't like. Um, oh, okay. Oh, for a second, I thought you were talking about like you know towards the end when like there's literally oh, split like screen. a split screen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No. split focus is. is all, I'm not oh, talking yeah. about split screen. Yeah, split screen. Oh, okay. Split screen. I don't necessarily like want it a lot of movies. I think it works fine in this movie when it comes in. I I think there are uh, I, I I think there are parts uh, that it works really well. There are other parts that I feel like is like eh, maybe you didn't need it for this scene. Um, I mean, it's really mostly, you know, like, just, like, obviously, like, just, like, kind of, you know, that last big set piece. And I think there's some instances where it makes it look really cool, and then other instances where it's like, ah, eh, maybe didn't need it here. But uh, I, I know what you're talking about, though, that specific scene, like, in the classroom, because it did, um, you know, obviously, I didn't know your fancy term for <laughs> auto focus. Oh, ooh la la. Uh, but it did stand out to me. I was like, oh, this, this does look kind of weird, but it didn't really bother me fantasy term it's literally just the same as split screen but it's focus instead of screen because it's the focus that's split oh my god it's like the most rudimentary way of getting to it as possible i don't even anyway uh so 
yeah and so the movie the movie is obviously it's got a very dreamlike quality to it it's, got, it's almost like it's smeared vaseline over the camera lens <laughs> at, at points yeah the way it looks it's got, it's got that very specific look um i think the movie of course the story itself is a very specific story it's dealing with a lot of things much like you know king feeling nervous about even writing it because it's you know it's, it's about female puberty is, is it something that he can really write about and i think what's interesting about this story is it's, it's very much about the pressures um of being a woman and very much about like what's expected and what the you know the whole idea of carrie's mother being this over religious person because she's terrified of being this sinner or her daughter being this sinner and i think what's neat about it is that this movie is very much about the pressures and the stigma of everything that goes along with being a woman but there's other than some small characters all of the all of the people who actually enforce this in the film are also women which i think is a very interesting lens to kind of put it through that yeah sure there's the teacher at the start who kind of gets her name wrong and that's a big deal and that you know it's notable that that kind of comes up again and she hears that she has like a sort of memory of that moment uh, a very pivotal yeah. point uh, towards the end but what i'm saying is that it's interesting to me that the film chooses to kind of like okay obviously these pressures are largely due to the, the patriarchy and the the male part of the world but it doesn't necessarily focus it through that lens where oh, we're seeing a lot of men kind of like demand things or do, do this or do that it's all about how the other women around her have all these preconceived notions and judgments based on what they're expected so they just kind of fit into the mold and because carrie doesn't fit into that mold they mistreat her you know the, the, the high school ca- girls bully her her mother demands things of her and says no you shouldn't be a sinner you should be this you should be that you know and it, obviously the opening scene kind of like just gives you this visual of it this this uh this this very stark scene i mean i guess we can talk about the opening scene uh and spoiler free because it's kind of the, the setup of the movie but sure. uh, carrie yeah. gets her first period very late you know as well i think for you know most most people are, are getting their first period about what from 10 to like 12 10 to 13 uh, kind of uh, you're an prob- expert tim yeah, pro- yeah. probably <laughs> uh that, that sounds about right <laughs> I, no, like I, I do think yeah that is like a specific thing that they bring up in the book bo- in the in the book that it's like yeah she she is getting this like very late yeah um because uh, she, she's very repressed not that, that being repressed necessarily means your body will physically kind of follow suit but in this case it has yeah. and we have this scene where because she starts freaking out with the with the, with the, the discharge where she, she thinks she's bleeding and she's, she's dying and she's asking for help they all start laughing at her and, and it's, it's literally a scene of them all throwing tampons and pads <laughs> at her and saying yeah. plug it up plug it up uh, while laughing hysterically and i was actually thinking during this scene because you know i've seen the movie before so i'm not like just i'm not in the shock of it um uh, mm-hmm. obviously though the way the camera moves through the scene in slow motion is a lot of these girls are full frontal nudity kind of galloping in slow motion i'm like all right yeah. the palm we get it you're a bit sleazy <laughs> right we get it <laughs> Um, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that no girl's locker room in high school has ever felt this magical um, in the history of the world. <laughs> yeah, it also it feels like such like a like a, a relic thing, like um, how like it, like we didn't uh, like when we took gym and stuff. I don't, I don't remember what we did, but I don't think we had to like shower afterwards. Yeah, like, we didn't. We... Yeah, we, we didn't either because there was actually a shower room in our like sort of PE area that was never used, and it, clearly it was something that was used at some point, you know, yeah. back in the day. But it was never something we used. But just like whenever uh, I see that in movies or something, it just like you know the idea of having to do that with people around you and just knowing like everyone's already like super nervous and like you know kids in high school would be so cruel like uh you know the the, uh, the idea of having to do that just sounds like horrifying <laughs> yeah yeah no, no like, I, I never get made to do it in school and i i feel like it's something that probably has been kind of phased out whatever it was a thing yeah. Uh, for probably obvious reasons. If I recall correctly, it was just a case of whack on some deodorant and just hope for the best afterwards until you get yeah, home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like we, you did have to like you know change. You uh, would have to change your clothes, so you yeah. have like you know, special like you know PE clothes or whatever. But then yeah, you just kind of really layer on the deodorant and <laughs> hope that's enough. Um, Joe, what's funny to me actually is that I feel like whenever I see in movies and stuff, American high schools obviously don't have uniforms. That's not a thing that they, that they, that you have. 
but you do most movies seem to have like PE uniforms they'll have like gym clothes that all match and I'm like this That's is true, weird to yeah. me what, why are the gyms <laughs> in uniform why not just have a t-shirt and shorts why does it matter that there's such cool colors on them it's, yeah. I don't know weird that's a good point yeah I, I don't think I've ever seen a, a place that has it. I mean maybe like private schools or something might have them but I think private schools do um, yeah yeah, that was never really a thing. Um, I mean, one one of the things uh, I really love uh, about King that I think he does uh, so well, and um, uh, unfortunately, I don't think like uh, some of the like later movies have captured it great. But King writes a great bully. Like he like uh, and and obviously, I think it you know translates well to this movie. But he just really knows how to like. Um, make these like the scenes like with bullies and like you know a lot of this classroom stuff that just really like you know uh makes you cringe and really feel for the character and it's like oh, that it's like a it's like such a a, a train wreck and like a, a nasty scene that you don't want to watch but you're also like drawn to it like it's like so uh awkward <laughs> but uh and yeah i think it's like opening scene like yeah does it really well and then obviously like yeah throughout the movie she's getting bullied and yeah. stuff and, so yeah here's, here's uh, the thought i was having during this opening scene though yeah. does this top from halloween 4 and he's an orphan and he's an orphan <laughs> I think it's a difficult comparison because on the one hand, yeah, this this feels a lot more vicious because she's naked, she's being taunted, she's terrified. Um, yeah. But obviously, like, you know, the, the eight-year-olds in Halloween 4 wouldn't be in that position. Like, mm. there is something especially cruel about saying, ha-ha, your parents are dead, essentially, is what the, the, yeah. the message of that is. So I was just like, yeah, maybe this is worse. Maybe them all yelling, plug it up, um, <laughs> uh, is, is worse. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. But. It, it, it just might be and especially since it's like uh you know it's like everyone's doing it uh yeah. which I, I i do like the um uh the i i forget uh like the one character that ends up like being like kind of good that um is you know i'll let uh, ask tommy to yeah yeah you know take her out is that is, um, that, is that sue yeah I think it's too. Yeah, like uh, I, I do like that she actually like comes around later and is like, uh, like realizes like what what they did is messed up. Uh, you know, because uh, I, I think it's like a nice little change. Like it feels like oh yeah, like you know, I think there are definitely people that you would get caught up in a moment like that and then afterwards be like, geez, like <laughs> that was messed up. Yeah, what, 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 yeah, what did I just take part in? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think especially like you know thinking back to like high school and stuff where you know again there's like so much pressure everyone's like awkward and trying to fit in and no one wants to be the outcast and then it, it's so easy to you know jump on someone uh, and then later you and I, I think you know that's what you see like you know with people like our age when they're you know they look back like you know oh man like i was such a dick to that one person like oh like <laughs> why would i do that or yeah something like, that. Like, like i was saying like all, all the major characters in this this movie are, are women and obviously the, the two exceptions you're going to give me here are tommy and uh, john travolta's character but even both of those they, both good and bad the, 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 they are being asked to do things by other women like they, they're being asked you know like tommy's asked by by sue to go take her to the prom and uh travolta's been asked by by chris nancy allen's character to to do you know, to do the things that he's doing um so all of the, the forces for good and evil in the movie are coming from from women they're, they're coming from uh carrie's mother or uh miss Cur uh, was it collins not cornell collins uh who's the, the gym teacher who's like trying to who's kind of looking at looking out for her like everything is being pulled and it's, so it's, a, it's a very feminine movie in the sense that it, it very deals with it very much just deals with the forces that are feminine pulling her in either direction or i not pulling her that's maybe not the right phrase but uh, tr trying to help her destroy her essentially uh from either place so uh, i think that's a very interesting um, setup for the movie um, yeah, certainly. But uh, yeah, so obviously uh, performances are good. Um, mm. You know, it's uh, the camera work is also very good. The direction is very solid for the most part. Like I say, there's that one split focus moment. Uh, there's one or two like moments where uh, like he's maybe doing a little bit too much. But for the most part, it's a really good looking movie, and the moves yeah. feel really good. And I think because it feels so dreamlike, when the shit hits the fan, and it stops mm -hmm. feeling dreamlike. It really feels h harsh. It feels like all of a sudden we've walked into a nightmare. Because one yeah. of the things we are saying, of course, is we're not spoiling the ending. Is that what makes this a horror movie? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. Spoilers. Um, yeah. Uh, although that said, I want to mention the music actually. 
I think there's some really good music in this, but I think there's also some, uh, like, because there's the sort of the main theme, which is quite good, which is kind of sweet, but bittersweet at the same time. Uh, but there's also a lot of sharp, like, psycho knockoff strings at yeah, points. Yeah. Uh, whenever she uses her telekinesis, there's like a da, 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 kind, of, kind of thing. And I'll be okay, I get it, I get it, De Palma, you like Hitchcock, I get it. <laughs> <clears throat> oh yeah no totally like it, it definitely works in here but it's uh i mean especially since we um you know i, I mean uh, you know it's not come out yet the the order is all crazy but you know just re-watching all the psycho movies uh, uh-huh. like very fresh in my ha- mind and uh uh yeah be feel very now, time you just spoiled that. psycho movies are coming soon what dare you oh people no oh, people know what we're doing <laughs> because uh, they're stuck in my letterbox <laughs> yeah <laughs> i always think about that like after like i watch a movie i'm like uh mate should i read this on letterbox and then i'm like uh but then maybe i like, give it away but i'm like uh well who cares <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i although with some depending on what who i'm recording with i'll sometimes not rate something on letterbox until after i've recorded the review at least just so the person i'm recording with doesn't know how i feel about the movie because oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I know they check i know they check oh yeah it's uh the first thing i do when i wake up yeah, yeah you're not even kidding that, that silica was a joke he was not joking he does that when he wakes up it's very important to him yeah, so I, I like to get mad at the start of the day <laughs> you get mad i've seen some of your crazy ratings on there <laughs> five stars for hellboy are you absolutely mad uh, yeah <laughs> i love owning it on blu-ray because i just watch it whenever i want it's a good feeling. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Dear, 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 dear. Um, so, yeah, that, that is the, the gist of Carrie. Uh, we'll give you the spoiler warning, I think, now, so we can talk about the film in more detail and go into the plot and what happens. So, uh, full spoilers for the movie, although, of course, before we start the spoiler section, I will tell you right now about patreon.com slash TV, where you can support us for as little as $1 per month. And for that $1 per month, you get access to an exclusive bonus episode that is only on Patreon uh, for a $1 patrons it up. And that will just cost you $1. And it is worth mentioning that in October, because of the October thorn, you're getting four exclusive episodes in October. So, um, very really good time to jump on, jump on board. Uh, but of course, there's a back catalogue of all the previous exclusive episodes. And you get exclusive episodes of some other shows that I do on, on, the, on the channel with uh, the other guys. So... Um, go go and uh, go and have a look. At the five dollar tier, you get to vote on uh, an episode once per month, and the higher tiers, you get your name at the end of videos and things like that. So go and have a look, see and see if you want to help support all the content that we we put out, especially in October where we're putting out like thirty one episodes in <laughs> thirty one days, because uh, we're mad and crazy. Uh, it might even have been more than that if if uh, Tim's like, hey, this this movie I just watched, we should do it, and I'm like, okay, you crazy yeah. man. <laughs> It may happen, happen but <laughs> it may happen. Uh, so yes, uh, the idea of me uh, watching more movies uh, that would probably be good for the show will ha- uh, that will happen. <laughs> but the idea of me uh, doing more work for myself <laughs> will <laughs> probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm spying on him. I don't know what he's watching. <laughs> the case that comes comes relevant. Um, so. Yes, that is uh that has been that's just had an idea. I'll talk to Tim about it afterwards. Uh, oh, but, dear uh, yeah, Tim, Tim's scared now. Whenever I get an idea, Tim gets really worried because mm-hmm. uh, it means more work. But uh, yeah, so let's talk about Carrie. Let's talk about Carrie, and let's talk about the the prom massacre and everything mm-hmm. that, that leads up to it and it happens. So it's a weird movie to talk about because I feel like the first hour of it is kind of one blurry kind of build up obviously there's some notable scenes sure. in there uh you know we meet her mother for the first time she gets trapped in the closet or uh where sue asks tommy to ask her out to the prom and she says no at first and he's very persistent and tries to talk her into it and it would almost feel like uh too aggressive if it wasn't for the fact that it never plays it off like it's, it's not like a guy who asks a girl out and gets gets a no who then yeah. won't take no for an answer it always comes off as no she's saying no because she's so antisocial and shy so i'm i'm intending Eventually, try to like sort of get her to break out of her, her shell, and that's not to say that he couldn't cross a line and still be too invasive with it. But it always comes off as kind of well intentioned. Oh no, I, I think Tommy is actually like a, a really good guy, and it's nice that they have like the you know the little scene with them in the classroom. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You know, she mentions that he likes his poems, so it does give him like a little bit of a 
you know a reason other than like you know he's not just like oh will you go like and you know she's like why and he's like, uh, i don't know it's like it's like oh well like you like my poem which i, I think he actually did you know like that she liked it and even though uh, even though he plagiarized it, it wasn't his but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but I here's like the big thing though. I never, uh, you know, from watching the movie and reading the book, I'm never really very clear on, on this point. Which uh, you know, I'd like to, you know, get your um, what you think of it. So I mean, obviously, you know, he's doing this as like you know a favor to his girlfriend. Asks him, you know, because she feels bad and everything. Uh, but then by the end of the movie, once they are you know, they're together, they're dancing, they're, they're laughing, you know, they share a kiss and everything. Like, do you think he is actually potentially falling for her? Or do you think he is still just being like a, oh, I'm a good guy here. Uh, you know, I'm helping get this person out of their shell and kind of, you know, doing something nice for this person that wouldn't have gone to the dance or whatever. Cause I, I feel like sometimes they want, want you to kind of feel like, oh, like this, there could be something, uh, there which uh I, i'm not against that idea but it does feel like uh you know it kind of fast you know uh, for something like that to happen yeah i never i never quite got the impression that he was really falling for the end but the arc for him i think is that he is still he's a bit of a douche at first you know when he's first asked to do this by sue he's like oh really um <laughs> you know and then you know miss miss uh, collins finds out about it and is like this better not be some practical joke this you know and, and sue's like no 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 seriously i want her to ha to go and like sort of open up and have a good time and whatever like i want i want to do this for her kind of thing I, I think by the time he, he's with her on the dance and he's taking her there and they're sitting at a table and he's like saying she's beautiful and stuff I, and he's dancing with her because there's that great shot where the camera's spinning around them as they're dancing and it's yeah. kind of like the, the, the culmination almost of all the build up um, to, to, to this, this night um, you know he seems like he does generally say, you know you're actually quite a nice person and I don't know if it's necessarily that he's falling for her in like a, a like full on romantic way but I think it's like him realising no she's actually a pretty decent person and she deserves to have this and it's the you know I think that's when he truly believes that this is you know, why Sue asked him to do this like it's not just yeah. I'm doing this because my girlfriend asked me to um so like yeah it does have an arc there I, I, but I never quite bought that it was like no he's actually in love with her now <laughs> at the end of the day yeah like uh like potentially like and if it is it is kind of weird because then it's like uh was he gonna leave his girlfriend then yeah. <laughs> and like uh but i do think like maybe there's at least a, a little bit of a spark of him being like oh you know what like hey this girl isn't that bad like she's like pretty cool and um which uh which i think is nice like i i i did like that he um because yeah, you know, i think there's like another way to go with the character where it could just be him very like hesitant the whole time just be like all right fine i'll do this and yeah. then not talking to her but he is like genuinely like you know very nice and uh, to her and does feel like he at least cares about her maybe it's not specifically a romantic kind of thing yeah. but and uh, to be fair to me even, like when he, even when he's more apprehensive early on he never acts that way in front of her when he's asking her out mm -hmm. he, he, he goes at 110 percent like he makes sure it sounds as nice as possible yeah you know so um yeah i mean that's i, I think that's fair i the, the, the i mean the build-up has a lot of stuff in it of course you know we see carrie use her ability a couple of times Um, i do like how she smashes the mirror and when her mom comes up to check what the noise was the mirror is like went back up and it's still cracked obviously from where it, where it broke but she's put it back up into the into the frame yeah and it's like okay clearly we didn't see that because of visual effects and the budget probably wouldn't have allowed for it but I do love that, like, it really suggests a, a level of control that we didn't see yet. Because we saw her, like, you know, move the ashtray or, like, blow the light bulb earlier on. But this was like, no, you have to have been controlling it pretty well to put all the pieces of glass back in place with your mind. Like, yeah, <laughs> that took skill. Yeah, and it's kind of cool, like, to see her, like, discovering her ability, especially, like, uh you know she she seems like someone that just has like such a bad life uh and it's kind of nice to see her actually like, get excited when she kind of starts like learning more about this uh although i do think it is kind of like a like a, a cheesy scene when she's in the library learning like telekinesis like that's totally fine but like the fact that she says everything out loud so slow <laughs> is kind of like weird i think that's a <laughs> like, when she's reading yeah oh no definitely for yeah. sure like yeah i'm sure they're just like oh we got to make sure people get it but uh it's like really like who would go to a library like find something and just read it out loud and then even if you are going to read it out loud she's so slow with it which i guess it is just so the camera can follow it and like yeah. you know keep up with it but uh it's one of those movie things 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you know, Marla, Marla doesn't want to go. She keeps trying to stop her from leaving. And but at this point, Carrie's like, no. She shuts you. She shuts the door over her mind. And her mom's like, no, you've got the devil in you. This is Satan. He's working through you. And she's like, that's not the devil. It's me. And this is where the, the themes of like, because obviously her mother immediately, when she has her period, is like, ah, oh, you've become a woman now. You've sinned. Yeah. You must repent. Oh, you've been asked to the prom? Yes. Once once that's happened, the boys can smell it and they, they come crawling to try and find out where the smell's coming from. You know, she says all these kind of really harsh <laughs> things yeah. about uh, attraction, basically. But <laughs> she, you know, she, she's, she's very kind of adamant. And then once she reveals that she's got this power, she's like, oh, no, the devil's working through you. You have to, like, never use it. You have to, like, hide it. You know, the, the metaphor here is quite obvious. Like, this is like, oh, you can't actually, you know, like, from a moral perspective, you can't be a woman. You can't use your feminine attributes. You can't do any of this. You can't use this because it's dangerous and it's wrong and it's this and it's that. Which, yeah. you know, is, there's this fear mongering. There's this, this, this attitude of her. And of course, we find out a lot about her mother that, um, like, you know, her father left, you know, Carrie's father left, uh, abandoned them. And Carrie, Carrie, like, is pretty well adjusted to it. It's like, oh, he left with a woman. He ran off. It's not the devil. Like, calm down yeah. <laughs> and she's like no, no 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 he left he he did what he did and he left but of course by the end of the movie she admits that she liked it that she's like no no he looked down at me and he, his hands were all over me and I, I, I loved it I sinned like yeah. you know so it's, it's this little guilt that she has and it's you know you, I think you can maybe look at all the specific things like oh yeah so her religion's maybe like part of the problem here for her specifically or, or so on and so on but um, she goes to the dance and of course we see throughout the film the build up of, of Chris making John Travolta uh, agree to this plan whatever it is because she's pissed that because of the the, 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 the humiliation in the locker room uh, the girls are all punished by the gym teacher to, to gym detention and Chris <laughs> refuses to go uh, after, after she goes for the first little bit but she sort of leaves in a huff and she's not allowed to go to prom because of this and she basically takes, takes this as a vendetta on Carrie like this is Carrie's fault yeah, and she arranges this plan to get pig's blood and pour over Carrie at the prom. Um, once she finds out, of course, that she's going. And here's so here's an interesting scene. So the, when we first meet John Travolta, they're in the car together, and <laughs> you know she's put on makeup, and he's like talking to guys in other cars and girls who drive past, and then eventually a cop and whatever. And they go to like a drive-in movie or something, and they're in the car. And she's trying to convince him to do stuff. After all of her fight, she starts. Going, she goes downstairs, and she's starting to give him a blowjob. What what, was, what strikes me odd about this scene is just how much talking Nancy Allen does, whilst apparently giving a blowjob. <laughs> she's like, Billy, <laughs> Billy, <laughs> Billy. I'm like, that's a lot. I mean, that's already a lot of talking. Billy, I've got something I want you to do for me. Billy, Billy, and it, it ends in a funny way because she's it, the scene ends with she's still down there. She's like, I really hate Carrie White, and he's like, Who's <laughs> Carrie White? And it cuts, like, yeah. you know. Um, it's a really, it's a really, it's a yeah. funny scene. It's a funny scene. Yeah, that's funny. I, I like when they're driving and his friends like are driving next to him and they just throw him a beer <laughs> between cars. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That was great. Uh, also, he I mean, also, he drills all over himself as he's drinking it. He's just got beer down his chin. Yeah. <laughs> as, like, the cops, like, drive by yeah. and, like, look at him. Uh, and I don't know, like, uh, man, John Travolta is, like, a weird guy. He He's not always good, but when he's good, he can, he can actually be, like, quite a you know uh quite a presence like i think you know he's not in this movie a ton but like i think the few scenes that he's in like he uh you know does really good i think this uh young travolta here is uh was uh, pretty cool to see mm. um so yeah uh so they've got this plan, and um, we see a lot of prep for it. Then going to like uh, actually, because John Travolta actually hacks a pig to death. Like he actually just hacks a yep. pig to get the blood. Probably more than one. I feel bad for it. <laughs> oh yeah, it has to be a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um. So and they've got this plan. They've even got someone like to to rig the votes for the the prom queen. Uh, which is obviously part of the plan as well and you know like obviously one of the things this movie does is that it treats the prom like this magical thing that every teenager is like dreaming about and wants to go to like you know when Carrie's there like Miss College is talking oh you'll always remember this night your prom you know I went to my prom and it was magical and she's like oh yes I love it it's very nice and you know it gives me this feeling and like yeah I don't remember it feeling that special <laughs> I don't remember it being a big deal but whatever I I, I, there were definitely people in my school that felt like that. Um, mm. 
yeah it <laughs> i it, it was not something i was looking forward to probably because i was like uh i mean i was single at the time which if you're single and especially when all your other friends have dates it's uh-huh. definitely not a fun thing um but yeah prom sucked i remember like i, I remember like feeling like so much peer pressure to go and be like i don't want to go like why <laughs> this is stupid and then uh, lo and behold it was uh but mm-hmm. i don't know i think some people like it, especially back then it probably was maybe more of a thing um, yeah it's, it's not one of those movies movie things that don't seem to be like like movies will still do it sure even though it's maybe yeah. not as, as big as a deal as it once was it's the same with their uh, trick-or-treating at halloween i feel like that's died out quite a bit over the years but movies will still have trick-or-treating as if everyone still trick-or-treats oh yeah yeah i mean i i love doing that as a kid but i think uh yeah nowadays i uh, i mean this would be like my uh first year uh like living in a you know more suburban kind of area so i am interested if we'll if we'll get trick-or-treaters yeah, uh, be, be I, well, I like- yeah yeah, I, I hope so, but because uh, I always like uh, passing out candies to, to the little kids. Uh, but uh, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! You always like what? Here, oh, kiddies, no, come here, Uncle yeah. Tim. Here's your candy. Get your candy. <laughs> All unwrapped, of course. Uh, but um, <laughs> but. Uh, I, I Actually, don't, don't, go, don't go trick or treat at Tim's house. He's just going to hand you out copies of Gold Man. <laughs> hey, I, you know, just giving the kids what they actually want. Uh, uh, no one cares about candy anymore. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, because I, I lived in the uh, you know city uh, for like the last couple of years. I really never got anyone. But yeah, even without that, I don't know if yeah everyone's so worried about uh, you know strangers. And, yeah, and people like you. I don't know if that many people who like kind of <laughs> candy to little kids. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's weird. I don't know if it is much of a thing anymore. But anyway. maybe we'll bring it back. Maybe we'll do a adult trick or treaters. No, I, I, I do have a really good idea uh, for a Halloween costume this year. Uh, so th- here's what sucks about being an adult: it's like you still want to dress up for halloween but you need like an excuse to do it so i have a really good idea for a costume that i want to do but i need to make sure like someone's having a halloween party or something (laughs) like i can't just get like a cool costume and then just like what sit on my couch (laughs) on halloween like i don't know i was going to suggest you could do it for the stream but then that would mean i'd have to dress up too i don't want to (laughs) (laughs) oh of course yeah 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 Uh, (laughs) What? <laughs> I was gonna make fun of you for being a bad horror fan because why? Why would you not want to dress up for Halloween? Come on! Cause that's, I'm not good at putting costumes together. All right. <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm horrible too. Uh, I yeah, because like yeah, I go to like a lot of con convention stuff. I see like some of these cosplay. I'm like, man, I, w- I would love to cosplay. I mean, I, obviously, I'm not in shape for it, so <laughs> yeah. I'd have to do. But we also, uh, for the record, we can't really like we can't wear a mask because we'll be talking at the camera on a make all night we can't sure. wear a mask while doing that so that rules out like so many costumes already yeah so no Look, I'm sorry <laughs> maybe Tim will do something for you guys but I'm, I'm not doing it maybe I'll wear a Santa hat that's what you get <laughs> great <laughs> <laughs> what else you want from me Timmy come on so yeah, so, so Carrie was Prol Creed and goes up. It's this magical thing. Everything's in slow motion. And what I'd forgotten about, because I hadn't watched it in a while, is how it really kind of like does the slow motion build to the actual moment happening where Sue's like backstage and then she, she notices a little rope and she starts to like come around and looks between the stairs and sees them in there like plotting and scheming. <laughs> and like Carrie's walking up in slow motion. She sees the bug, like all this stuff. Like I, I forgot how much of a slow motion build there was to the moment itself. Yeah. No thoughts on that. Okay. Um, so, of course, the moment- I, I did keep thinking, like, how long have these people been clapping? Like, oh, yeah. I don't know. After a while, I would have been like, all right, guys, that's enough Actually, clapping. Actually, right? okay, so we're almost to the bucket tip it over, which obviously is the big moment we're going to talk about. But I want to rewind for a second and just go, I want to go to the montage. There's like a montage just before the prom where we see a bunch of the characters, like, you know, getting ready. Like, some of the girls at the salon and some of the guys are wearing tuxedos. Yeah. I want to talk about one weird choice in the tuxedo scene. I know where, what you're gonna say. <laughs> yeah, there's a moment in this scene where it's like there's three guys. It's Tommy and two others, and yeah. they're talking. You know, one guy's put on a tux. Uh, the, there's this one guy who's like, ah, nah, like it's too many ruffles. I don't like tuxes. I don't wear red tux. 
Um, and then it comes back, and then the second guy's got a tux on. It's like, okay, right, so you've got a tux too. Um, and for some reason, instead of just cutting to, to the next part of the scene they wanted, they do a speed up thing where it speeds <laughs> up and it's, they speak like chipmunks for like, you know, <laughs> 10 seconds. And it's like, and it, it just continues. And it's the only time in the whole movie where it does this. Yeah, it's a very weird choice. <laughs> very odd. I don't know why. It's very strange. <laughs> very strange just... it's one of those things like i always forget that that is uh happening but then when i get to the scene i, I always go like oh yeah <laughs> yeah that's moment that's a weird moment anyway so the, the the blood comes down and everything goes silent just goes dead silent and all the dreamlight music well, comes comes to an end well, well uh I'll argue with that it's everything silent except for the you know constant like hitting of the bucket like against the like yeah, you hear. Oh sure. Kinda, uh, well, what like, I meant is, is the uh, the the noise of the crowd and the music all just yeah. go. Oh, yeah. Very yeah, I, I just, I, yeah, I, I love that uh, that like sound choice though. Like it just really like yeah, especially because everything up until then, like you said, I've been so slow and so dreamy and magical, and then just once everything is just cut away from that, you just left with like this, you know, stark reality and just the repetitive, uh, you know, beating of the bucket. Uh, I don't know if it's like just like against the wall or yeah. uh, scaffolding or whatever, but it's just uh, really, really, really effective. And there is this, the slow hum that kind of comes in here as well. And uh, so the, the, the culprits do get away. Sue's outside the gym when this happens, but obviously Carrie, when people are trying to leave, starts slamming the doors, and this is where the split screen comes in. And what I love about this moment, actually in terms of the filler maker, is I love how it goes split screen so we can see her head do it, like, looking at things as things are happening. Yeah. And it, you know the lights turn red, and I love that you know, it, you know, it moves her over to the left, and then she looks up, and then you see the lights change on the, the right side of the screen, and the split screen, and it's, just, it's got this nice like, sort of movement to it. There's a nice rhythm to the way, yeah. like, her head does something, and we see the thing happen. And it's very, you know, she's bathed in red, not just with the blood, but the, the light as well. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if that maybe might have inspired uh, Raimi a little bit, because it does feel like Evil Deadish in, in a way, you know, like when someone oh, like but... looks at something real quick and you get like a little bit of a zoom. It's another way of doing it, but uh, yeah, and I just wonder if maybe uh, it might have been inspiration for it. And of course, she starts taking control of things around the, the building and starts killing people, starts murdering yeah. them. Yeah, the, yeah the, like uh, you know, she's uh, like uh, taking out like the fire hose and like you know spraying people, and everyone's falling down. Like you know, uh, you know, all the doors are barricaded, and then you know the water mixes with like you know some stuff from the lights, which uh, you know starts like electrocuting some people, and uh, eventually you know, then just, a fire starts. Yeah, eventually there's just parts of like the building that just fall down on top of people and yeah. kill them. I oh, and then. And I guess we, and I think we forgot to mention too, but the the bucket ends up falling and hitting Tommy on the head. And yeah, I, I always I always thought this was like a little weird, but like I, I don't know, like buckets aren't like that heavy, right? Like I, I mean, I guess maybe if it hits someone like on a weird angle and it's like well, a, I think it's the height it's falling from because the, the the higher okay. it's falling from, the, the harder it's going to hit him. Okay. And as male, yeah. it's not like it's just true you know yeah. f you know f something soft and fluffy um yeah because uh, one of the things that um we didn't mention as well is that you know in the moment where it goes silent and you know there's this this sort of slow build where like it's yeah, pj souls character starts laughing and she tries she basically starts to like hit other people to start laughing as well and yeah. you know the, the laughing starts and then from carrie's perspective everyone's laughing including miss collins who obviously isn't we know she isn't but she sees that yeah and she starts hearing things she starts hearing uh the flashbacks of her mother saying things but also the teacher the hit the principal at the start of the movie who yeah. kept calling her cassie and i think it's very interesting to use that because he's such a minor character in the overall course of the film it's very yeah. interesting to go all the way back to the start of the movie and go for when this guy just didn't care about her this guy didn't understand her nor which by the way one of my favorite shots of the movie is when uh, miss calls is explaining what happened in the in the locker room to him um oh, yeah. there's a shot where she like so she's standing up and he's sitting down and he notices a bit of the blood on her white skirt and he sort of gets really yeah. uncomfortable it's just a really nice little moment i yeah. just i really <laughs> like that he's basically the 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 embodiment of oh uh, women things oh i can't talk about that yeah. um uh, uh, periods uh film yeah. <laughs> something something you know and uh, I like it. He has a, a little bit of a bigger role in the book, but uh, there's like a really good scene um, with him where he uh, is like talking to uh, the parents of uh, Sue, who's obviously like, you know, very rich and like hoity toity kind of uh, person who's like, you know, threatening to sue the school and like, you know, uh, 
for not letting her go to prom and uh and he actually like sticks up for uh you know the gym teacher and carrie and stuff and like you know sticks by his guns even though it probably means he'll lose his job because this you know rich powerful parents can so it's more but, sympathetic uh, when he dies at the end yeah yeah definitely yeah. but i mean he still does have the thing where like he gets uh her name wrong so it's not like he's you know like, not perfect uh, yeah, yeah but it, it but it is but like you said though it's not like uh it's not like a malicious thing no like, he no just, doesn't know it's, it's, it's kind of nuanced in a, in a way the, the idea same with Tommy the idea that he's kind of ambivalent at first but then he kind of like comes yeah. around as the movie goes on it's just I, I think it's the idea that people are flawed and people aren't going to be perfect um, yeah. and I think the big thing with Carrie though is that you know her mother keeps telling her oh, the devil's in you the devil's in you and it kind of goes back to that thing where she's told she's something often enough that ultimately she becomes yeah. it even though she doesn't have to be that thing um and it kind of again it goes into the idea of like say slut shaming someone that if you keep calling someone a slut sure, eventually yeah. they may become a slut <clears throat> because yeah um i've definitely heard of that happening obviously again not everyone who's called a slut becomes a slut but it's that kind of idea of it is constantly reinforced that yeah that you can kind of become it and that's it, kind of what happens with carrie here and obviously there's the whole idea of the rage and the idea of it, it bubbling up in the the adolescence just kind of you know going extreme yeah and uh yeah and then, uh, like, and uh, again, yeah, it's all just really done well uh, in the scene. And then I do like, um, yeah, one of the first things, like, you know, that happens when she's like drenched in blood, and like, um, again, it's all silent. But I like that you can see like Tommy like yelling out in the crowd, like he's like, yeah, he's like, uh, for her. he's he's he's, yeah. he's angry that this has happened. Yeah, and then uh, and I like one of the fr- I think one of the first things you hear, you know. Uh, well, I forget if it's like maybe the first or the last, but when you start hearing, you know, the, uh, her mother's voice saying, you know, they're all going to laugh at you. Like, yeah. you know, that's what she was saying. Like before, you know, she left for the prom. And then uh, when that like starts repeating over and over again, and then again, it's silent. But just that in the book, it sounds just really, really. Um, I, I like what you were saying uh, about earlier before about how everything felt so dreamlike. It's such a quick uh you know change to all yeah. of a sudden like it feels very nightmare <laughs> like no it's absolutely nightmarish and I, in fact some of my favorite moments of this is probably the ending when the fire starts behind her and she's walking down yeah. with the fire behind her yeah and then yeah. she walks out the building and behind her it's just in flames the music yeah. there is really good <laughs> it just it feels apocalyptic like they've really like created a monster but it's a monster created by like society oh, by yeah. others yeah. by them and i like though that even though it has been created by others Outside of her mother and, like, Chris, like, most people around her, and maybe PG Souls, I suppose, as well, but, like, yeah. you have so much sympathy for Chris. Toby sticks up for her. You can see that he's trying to help her, and then he gets knocked out. Uh, Miss Collins has been trying to help her all movie. Like you say, in the book, you get more with the principal to make you sympathetic towards him. Like, you actually feel sympathy for a lot of the main characters that we've met that we know enough to have an opinion on. Um, we actually, and even all the other, the other guys, you know, the tuxedo place, like, those those uh guys like we never really get a lot of to like know they're assholes or good guys or whatever yeah. but we just we know enough that like oh they're people and they're, they're getting slaughtered here for re- really no real reason uh, oh know. yeah sure so uh, you know I, I think it's interesting that how much sympathy you have for some of these characters because it'd be very easy for this movie in the book as well i suppose but this even even in adapting it it'd be very easy for this movie to treat this like any other type of revenge movie where you just like make us hate everyone so that when she does this it's like cathartic it's like yeah kill them all like kind of thing yeah but it's not <laughs> that at all it doesn't feel that way it feels kind of dark and sinister and kind of like you know but at the same time you don't, you don't hate her for it either because you understand why oh no definitely yeah like there's uh like it's, it, it's kind of interesting that the <clears throat> like the, you know the people that are um bad to her though are like so over the top bad uh that like it almost kind of makes up for you know the other people that maybe are just like a little more ambivalent but you kind of get the idea of like yeah, maybe the majority of the school and stuff isn't mean to her, but they all feel like so ready to jump on the chance to yeah. uh, like be mean to her. Because like you know the big instances, um, you know like uh, the the locker room scene and then the yeah blood scene. It's like uh, you know it, it's it's kind of like you know one person spearheading you know all these people laughing at her and pointing at her, but at the same time like you know other than tommy at the prom like there's never really like, a person that's kind of like standing up and shouting the other people down it's like the people are so you know willing to jump in and like you know just join that and it is kind of weird the um the prom scene like i 
again, maybe people might have been a little more cruel back then or something. But like, I feel like if that happened, like when I was in high school, like even if it was like someone you don't like, you'd still be like, wow, this is messed up. Like, yeah, yeah, most, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I was like, there'd be a couple of assholes who would laugh, but they would in no way convince yeah. everyone else to laugh. Like, it just wouldn't happen. People, yeah. I, I, I'm happy to say this, there's a lot of crappy people in the world, but people in general are a little bit better than what movies make them out to be sometimes. Yeah. Um, like, because there's even a moment here, because like you said, it's kind of like PJ Soul spearheads the laughter. The, yeah. Before she does that, it does kind of feel like the, the moon in the room is actually just that of like, oh shit, that's, yeah, you know, what just happened? Like, that's what it kind of feels like for, for you know, for that 30 seconds or whatever. And then PJ Souls kind of starts laughing. And I, I almost want a version of this where they, 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 they don't slow it down and they let all the audio stay in just to hear her be the only one laughing. Because it would almost be funny <laughs> that she's the only one laughing for a, a moment. Actually, yeah, <laughs> that would be. Um, and then, and for the record, though, I was going to say that that's not necessarily a, a complaint of the movie because obviously it's a movie. So if you know that mm. stuff didn't happen, then like you know it, w- it wouldn't be as interesting a movie. Oh, yeah. So uh, well, but just a it's, it's a very allegorical film. It's, it's a film that's you know about something, and it's it's everything that's kind of a metaphor for. <laughs> Uh, what people really go through. Hell, one of my favorite things of all time is the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> and the whole idea of the Slayer is it's a metaphor for adulthood. And a lot of the stuff in this is a metaphor for, uh, you know, female adolescence and female sort of coming of age and all that kind of stuff. And I think, oh, and obviously, again, it's allegorical. It's not maybe taken literally. <laughs> just, just because we said, oh, we're sympathetic to Carrie when she murders everyone, that does not mean that in a real world situation, we think it's okay for sure. someone who's hard done by to <laughs> kill everyone at school. Because because that yeah. obviously brings up very serious connotations, but part of the reason why this doesn't feel like uncomfortable because it, it, you know it's, it's supernatural. This is like someone with a power doing something. This is not like because you could totally you could totally remake this movie and just have her pull out you know a gun like you could like that could be a version of this story and it would be very uncomfortable and it would feel far too real. Um, oh, definitely. Whereas this gets to do it through a lens that makes it work. It makes it work as a piece of entertainment that has something to say, but does it in a way that feels like, okay, but yeah, no one's actually got telekinesis, so <laughs> it never at any point feels like it's this hint. But it does have that dark kind of like apocalyptic vibe to it when she starts killing everyone. So. <laughs> and it was kind of funny. I, I did laugh because speaking of Buffy, we had just watched... Um, the, well, we just finished uh, season three, and then uh, I think it was the, I think it was their prom episode or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they have the person that goes up and like makes a speech and, and thanks Buffy, and he says like, oh, like thanks to you, like uh, this year we had like the, the lowest, uh, lowest mortality yeah. rate. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, it, it, but I, I couldn't help but think about that during the scene. I was like, ooh, like what are they gonna say like during graduation, like? You're gonna have like you know five ten people yeah. in attendance. Actually, the, like... uh, the uh, what I like about that moment in Buffy is that it kind of bookends something because way, way back at the start of the season, um, in the episode and the first episode, there's a great shot in that first episode where it's a big winner that follows all the students around uh, Sayadale High and it's like you know Willow and Zander leaving the library that it like follows to Cordelia who's with her friends and then we see Larry uh, who's talking about the football team and the scene the scene's great because the whole point of it is that it's very vibrant there's a lot of energy because the camera's constantly moving and then it cuts to Buffy in her like shitty apartment eating a can of something and it's like it's to show how depressing her world is right now versus everyone else the reason why I say it's like a nice bookhead is because in that scene Larry uh, it's just he's talking to like one of his friends he's like alright if we can you know do this if we can, you know, do this, you know, I'm feeling good about this season, this is football season, if we can, you know, keep our heads down, if we can work hard, and if we don't have so many mysterious deaths, yeah. Sunnydale's <laughs> going to rule! Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, them saying that at the end of the season, that, uh, the prom is actually really funny, that they kind of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I really... Yeah, it is, like, a strangely touching scene, too, because it, it's almost kind of, like, the opposite of Carrie here, where, like, um, you know, like, where, like, Buffy is, like... Uh, maybe not someone that everyone noticed, but uh, but like they do know that she's kind of different. But in this way, though, it's like a well, she's different in a way that protects us versus like a, yeah. Well, a big part like of here where th- that season for Buffy is the idea that she she wants to be homecoming queen. There's a whole episode about that. She wants to do all these things, and a lot of it stems from the fact that people can't just appreciate her for who she is. She has to try and pretend to be this normal person so that people will accept her that way. And the whole idea of her being congratulated and said, "Hey, we've kind of recognized that you're saving our ass," like. Constantly. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you. It's, it's a nice, yeah. it's a really nice sentiment that season because obviously the end of the season two is like so dark, you know, comparatively. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a nice upbeat ending for season three. 
Anyway, so Carrie goes home and uh, her mother's well, there. Uh, be- oh, sorry. Before she goes home, though, oh, the car. Uh, she's leaving. You're right, you're yeah. right. Yes, yes. Uh, the, the, the villains, uh, Chris and Travolta, uh, Nancy Allen and Travolta are in the car, and Carrie just flips it with her mind and kills yeah. him. <laughs> Done. Uh, probably, probably the biggest budgeted moment of the the, the, the movie. You know, the biggest stunt, certainly. Yeah. Uh, so she goes home though and I loved it because earlier on you see it was, it was like a little Christ doll in the cupboard that or, or cl- the closet that our mom it's like a very got. weird creepy yeah. looking one uh, <laughs> like, it feels like a weird like like because uh, you know, usually when you see like the Christ like uh, like if someone has like a you know Jesus statue or something in the house usually it looks like very like ornate or something like this yeah. feels like a weird like knockoff <laughs> you would buy at a flea market <laughs> so she Carrie's mom admits here you know this is where she kind of opens up and admits that she she liked uh, having sex and she feels so guilty and she's like you were created and uh, this evil was created because of him and the sin that we committed and yada 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 um, and she tries to kill Carrie to, to sort of stop the evil and she tries to stab her in the back with her knife and Carrie like you know does get stabbed she falls down the stairs but she's not dead and she fights back and we get knives flying through the air which basically crucifies her she has like both wrists yeah. knifed like up into the wall and she gets like stabbed multiple times and it, it kind of remedies because it actually cuts to a shot of this this Christ figure uh, that's been you know crucified and it's, it looks very similar so and then she brings the entire house down while they're still inside it and that's kind of the end of her story very very great scene I, I love this scene I, I always everyone remembers the prom scene but I always forget how good this scene is when she goes back home afterwards yeah. as well um, it really is a great moment and, the, uh, and like even the earlier scenes that the house always feels like so creepy like uh, at like oddly enough like even though a lot of bad stuff happens at the school like the feel- school feels like a little more safe like whenever she gets home it's always dark and lit by candles and yeah there's all like <laughs> this like you know kind of creepy religious icon uh, iconography around um and it just it, it really feels like proper horror yeah and especially like you know this last little bit here yeah absolutely uh the, the, the whole thing uh, just feels really kind of like you know, she's kind of destroyed her daughter by, like, shelter the way she has her whole life. And now her daughter, through almost a self-fulfilling thing, because she believed her to be evil, is now going to destroy both of them. Like, you know, they've kind of destroyed each other, and it's this very kind of sad, like, ending to the whole thing. And obviously yeah. the one final moment is that Sue, who did survive, uh, is having nightmares. She has this nightmare of going to uh, the house and Carrie's hand coming through and grabbing yeah. her. Well, like the the whole house like collapses on itself and then uh uh which in the book i uh it has been a while since i uh read it so people can correct me if i'm wrong but i think uh, what happens in the book is she kind of like calls down like rocks like almost like meteors (laughs) or something from the sky that basically uh come and destroy the house um so they simplify that a little bit for uh budget's sake yeah that's fair yeah, I think like the uh, the two uh, again. It's like a very very faithful adaptation. I think maybe other than like a little more character stuff, which obviously you know you normally get in a book anyway. But I think like the big differences between the book and the movie are um, uh, well, one the the book is told through a lot of like um, they have like a lot of uh, like interviews with people and stuff like uh, like after like the incidents happen. So you kind of get like this weird. Uh, like a kind of myth building aspect of it where like a chapter will start off with like an like a someone being interviewed by like a cop or like you know like a newspaper clipping or something about uh, what happened and then going into it so it's almost like a there's like like a book version of like a found footage aspect Mm. to it um but then also there is much more of a like um as she's walking back to prom she kind of like destroys like the whole city like it's not just you know, oh, right. the prom uh, and then back to the house uh, which I, I think uh, it's been a while since I've seen the the remake from like a couple of years ago but I think they get a little bit more into that yeah um, well I think you know there's no plans to do the Rage Carry 2 and the Carry remake right now but I mean now that we've done the first one it'll probably go on kind of the near future list yeah. where we'll probably get yeah. to them uh, at some point um, I, I I think I saw the Rage Carry two once on TV in like two thousand two or something like that, or two thousand three. Yeah. You know, like I don't remember it at all. I remember I remember the main girl having like short dark hair. That is like the extent of my memory of that movie. Yeah, uh, I I think there is a. Uh... 
uh, like a insane asylum kind of aspect of it. I, I think it might take place in one or something. Um, but uh, I, I'm interested in, in revisiting that. And, you know, that's we'll it. Around to it. We did already review uh, Carrie versus Jason, uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven. Uh, you can go find <laughs> a review of that. Um, I'm only half kidding. Uh, so, I think there's also a tv version oh yeah there was a mini series yeah i never saw yeah. it but there was like a tv mini series which i think was like two parts uh, the, the, the yeah the story i i i don't remember if i saw it i i must have but i can't really you know think of it i don't know if that's even available <laughs> to watch anywhere i'm, I'm sure it was the dvd uh, of it somewhere yeah. if nothing else it, it it, it's just it's funny though like one of those things that it's like a uh, you know it's a very simple story it's uh you know it's not very long like i think the book is maybe uh might be like around 200 ish pages uh and uh yet it's been like you know remade and redone so many times especially when you know i guess like most things the first version is the best yeah. uh but uh. yep um no, I will say I I got my Blu-ray around the time the uh, the remake came out because they got this new cover which is meant to look a bit more modern. Uh, yeah, yeah. It always sucks when they do that. Um, yeah, it's not as bad as the. Uh, I mean, I don't have this version, but the uh, Near Dark DVD they really released mm-hmm. when uh, Twilight was a big thing. They had like a very Twilight oh, looking no. cover for it, and it was like, "Ah, we doing." It's a great movie. And you're selling it with that Twilight pick. <laughs> Can't be having it. Uh, what's annoying is I have a. Uh, I got the special edition Blu-ray, which I, I uh, think is from Scream Factory. But then uh, I, you know, I like to be a completist. So even if like, you know, the sequel's not great, I would like to own it. But then the, as far as I know, the only version of the sequel on Blu-ray is like a, like a split movie where it's like a, like it's like a two for one, like Carrie and Carrie two. Uh-huh. But I think it's like also from Scream Factory. And it's like, why don't you just put out... <laughs> a regular version of the second one when you have a regular version of the first one and then i don't know i don't uh, have to and buy it it's basically yeah. they, they can only shift carry to is making it a slightly more expensive version of the first one I, f- I, f- I could be crazy but i feel like uh i mean obviously like with a lot of these things like you know they're cult cat classics but i bet there is like at least a small little fan base for carry too mm, probably Probably. Yeah. I guess I, I guess you can say that about like everything now. Like the internet is so, you know, like specified that. Yeah. I, I feel like almost everything has like at least a little fan base. Yeah. No, that's that's true. Um, except the boy, obviously. Uh, How dare you? So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so no, I mean that's basically carry. I think I think to kind of sum up, I just like I really. I really love when a horror movie has kind of something to say, and I, I think what makes this one sure. work is that. The characters are not two-dimensional. There, there are characters who are good and that are trying to help Carrie. So it makes yeah. her fall from her negative influences all the more tragic. Because there are good forces trying to help her. And they just lose. Because the, the bad the bad influences from, from Chrissy's bullying, from her mother's controlling, all of that stuff just doesn't work. And also just the idea that her mother tries to abandon her and kill her. You know, she just like, oh, basically she's like, no, yeah. I can't deal with you anymore. And it's under this guise of like, oh, you're evil and I'm saving the world by doing this. But ultimately it represents the idea of her being abandoned by her mother. Um, and, you know, so like very tragic. The whole thing is a very tragic story um, and kind of a warning of uh, basically be nice to people. Treat them better. Um, <laughs> don't mess with Peter. <laughs> don't mess with Peter. No, don't. I mean, I've talked to you this. <laughs> <laughs> and if i don't i'll do it with bare goddamn hands you hear me uh, so uh that is uh that is carrie hopefully you had fun with that discussion tim what are you rating carrie out of 10 uh i'm gonna give it an 8.5 uh, I, I think it's really really good it holds up um i <clears throat> i was tempted almost to go up to uh to a nine I, I really like it but again i think just a few things are like the um uh, you know just the kind of stuff that like sticks out to me like yeah like the weird speeding up <laughs> you know during that one scene or <clears throat> or just like you know every now and again like um this weird kind of like uh 70s music creeping in or like just like little touches like that that uh, again are not necessarily bad but maybe keep it from being like an evergreen classic uh to me but still really high score you know really yeah really no it's, it's it's great and I, I think i like it more watching it again and sort of reminding myself why it's good like i kind of like it more now than i ever have done uh i'm also i, mean, I think since the last time i watched this i've got a lot more into brian de palma i've seen a lot more of his movies from like 
because uh, Brian De Palma, like, if you ever seen Body Double or like Blowout, like he's made some great movies. Uh, yeah, and they're not really hor- they're more thrillers than horror. They're not really horror movies, but they're like well worth seeing. Yeah, I don't think I've seen too many of his stuff, but I mean, obviously he's a you know great director. Did he do a? Did he do a, a Hannibal Lecter movie? Was that him? No. Oh, okay. Who who did Manhunter? Or well, that was Michael Mann, who I also like. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I did really like that movie uh, a lot. Yeah, I, I don't know why I, I thought that was him. All right. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've seen much else of De Palma, but obviously good. Yeah. No, that was, that was a lot of good stuff in his early. Obviously, he got he's one of those directors who got kind of kind of worse once he hit like the two thousands or the late eighties. Yeah. But uh, his seventies and eighties output is is really good. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a uh, debate in my head. I, I think I'm I think I'm going to agree with you and go with eight point five. I think as I was watching it. Um, like in the first half, I was like, "Oh, this this is pretty well done. The, the, the directing is really nice." And I was thinking, kind of an eight. And then I think the you know the, the the real standout though is the the prom scene and then the scene at the house afterwards. And those really kind of sell. Okay, this is why the movie's so good. This is why this is what makes the movie is yeah. what it's been building to because it really has this 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 great feeling. The direction really like you know sings at this point. Mm. So um, eight point five for me. Mm. Uh, a few dated elements, um, and I do think he went a bit over the top with the dreamlike uh, sort of uh, blurriness that, that it has at times. I'm like, this this could really not be as sort of dreamlike looking, but yeah. again, mild, mild, mild things. Uh, so there you go, that's Carrie. So uh, yeah, uh, as per usual, you know, like, subscribe, let us know what you thought of the movie in the comments, and um, get us on the Twitters at Screams Midnight uh, for, for rambles from both of us and fun stuff, or you can get us individually, of course. I'm at Wibble89, Tim's at Tim Vergulish, and you can uh, uh, rate the podcast on Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts from, and uh, that helps us out a lot, gives a nice five-star rating, uh, lets more people find us, because Apple will recommend it or, or whatever more often. So yeah, uh, but I think that's everything I think I've said everything I need to say but that is us that has been Screams After Midnight that has been Carrie a nice big movie to do so thank you once again for watching and listening we always appreciate it keep watching scary movies guys and we will see you next time <laughs>